Welcome to another episode of the Bandage Podcast, a weekly wrap-up of the most trending healthcare news. Each week, we'll discuss the latest in healthcare, health IT, and compliance. In this week's episode, we discuss deadly fungus spreading in the U.S., testing for trank in street drugs, and finding the holy grail in cancer detection. Let's wrap things up. This is episode 179 for the week of April 3rd. I'm Matt Moneypenny. And I'm Albert Bettistelli. Before we get started, our diagnosis code of the week is X52, prolonged stay in weightless environment. Whoa. This You could say that this one is out of this world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, You're just floating in space. They probably haven't had very many of these diagnosis codes since the ICD-10 code existed because, as we know, the space program has kind of died right. since the People 60s. up there super often. Other than SpaceX for a couple years, I think SpaceX still does their thing every once in a while. But also, what kind of injury do you think you'd get from like just being weightless for a long time? Like maybe your bones would just deteriorate, your your muscles deteriorate. Yeah, your muscles might like atrophy or something. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Very cool. Anyways, let's get into the news. First up, we have Deadly Fungus Dilemma, which we love talking about on this podcast. Virginia mm-hmm. officials are warning of a, quote, concerning increase in cases of a deadly fungus spreading in healthcare facilities. Candida auris is emerging as a threat worldwide because of its resistance to antifungal treatments. Officials blame poor infection prevention efforts in healthcare settings, a problem exacerbated by the pandemic. The CDC says there's a fungus among us. Just kidding. They say that the fungus generally does not pose a threat to healthy people, warning that people in long-term healthcare settings face the greatest risk, which makes sense. I think there was a couple stories. Like, I think if you go to like episode like 20 of this podcast, there was something about black mold in healthcare facilities. So I think fungus just loves healthcare facilities, which is ironic, but it's That's also I think it's just the nature of there's just so many people and they're all sick and it's just a petri dish. Yeah, exactly. That's a good word for it. It does yeah, sound like a real. dilemma though. Oh, for sure. And uh hopefully it's a dilemma that they can uh solve. Hopefully the, the one... fungus doesn't evolve and suddenly take over right. people's life and Pedro right. Pascal has to save us. Right, which, I mean, or not save us because he chooses not to. I don't know, whatever. Spoilers. I know, I didn't mean to do that. Whoops, sorry, everybody. Oops. Didn't know that. You never know what you're going to get on this podcast, though. You show up, and <laughs> so that's on you. That's on us, honestly on everybody else. So, All right. Next up, cure for zombies. What? Zombies? Here we are again. Like, okay, we got fungus, we got zombies. This is definitely a, a Last of Us podcast now. Um. <laughs> Xylazine, an animal tranquilizer nicknamed Trank, has become a go-to cutting agent for drug dealers looking to stretch supply and boost effect of illicit drugs like cocaine, MDMA, and heroin. The drug can cause fatal overdoses and causes users to erupt in painful sores as the drug ravages flesh and leaves gaping wounds, requiring amputation in extreme cases. Test strips for flesh-eating zombie drug Trank are being rolled out in the U.S. in an effort to curb accidental overdoses. The new testing kits, which cost just $2 per test, are available from BTNX Online and give results within five minutes. Whoa. Whoa. I, think, I feel like I feel like the the drug market is like seeing a post apocalypse late stage capitalism yeah. scenario right now. I, it's just weird that we live in a world where the drug the illegal drugs you know, cartels and drug dealers are trying to save or trying to make higher profits by right. putting stuff in drugs that shouldn't be there. It's That's like supply, this yep. is already bad and then it's already impure and they're like, hey, let's just keep it's on just, adding stuff to just this cut tranquilizer our in there. Yeah, it's crazy. That's sad. It's crazy. It is sad. Don't do drugs, kids. Right. Because you don't say. know what you're doing. You might think you're just doing the line. But you don't know what's in that line. There could be animal right. tranquilizer. There could be fentanyl. There could be anything in that line. That yeah. That's why you need to walk the line of being yes. safe. <laughs> yes. Next up, finding the holy grail. The future of cancer treatment, hailed as the quote holy grail of early detection, is now being put to the test. 
Following a radically successful trial on cancer patients, a new blood test that promises to predict tumors more than a year before they begin to form is now being applied in hospitals across the UK. In a trial of 1,000 participants, 500 non-cancer and 500 cancer patients, researchers were able to accurately anticipate the formation of tumors across at least 25 types of cancers, including all the most prevalent and deadly varieties such as breast, pancreatic, lung, and colorectal. Even some participants within the presumed non-cancer group were found to be predispos- were found to have a predisposition for future cancer diagnosis. That's pretty wild. That is pretty wild. Like I guess it's it's different than normal because most cancer stories we have are like this could potentially cure it. This one's like this one can detect it before it happens, which is right. Which I is think good, is equally because, impactful. It is because then you can start like pre-treatment or at least. Half of the time, the issue with cancer patients is that it's too far along by the time they figure it out, and it's already metastasized, or it's already at stage four, or late stage. So if you can find it even before it starts, that's right. That's got to be really great. Awesome. Very, very cool. Very good stuff. And with that, let's go to our next segment. B-R-E-A-C-H. Breach Patrol. It's a breach! All of the latest cybersecurity breaches. Welcome to Breach Patrol. We're talking about the latest breaches all across the world. Albert, what do we got? <laughs> Latitude, lacking and lagging. On March 16th, 2023, the Australian personal loan and financial service provider Latitude Financial Services disclosed a cyber incident where a threat actor stole an employee's login to breach two of the company's service providers holding Latitude's customer data. At that time, the company estimated that the intruder accessed about 328,000 customer records, mostly driver's licenses. Unfortunately, after further investigating the incident, Latitude has revealed the impact of the incident is much more significant, now believed to have affected 14 million customers or loan applicants from Australia and New Zealand. Latitude says that they will reimburse those wishing to replace their stolen ID documents and recommend customers monitor their credit reports for fraudulent activity. Whoa. Whoa. This could cost them a lot of money. 14 million customers you figure even if it's just like five bucks to like replace some yeah that's stolen that's a lot ID. of money and you know it's more than five bucks but like even on at a minimum that's that's if it's one dollar that's 14 million dollars <laughs> no that's insane that's, just, <laughs> that's, that's wild that's a lot of money so it's good that they're doing that yeah now, it is are they going to file for bankruptcy after doing that potentially we don't know um, and they're also doing credit credit report monitoring too so this is probably the best reaction we've seen from a breach yeah. Yeah. i think it's also probably because they have to since they're a personal loan and financial service provider um but i guess if you're in australia you know it would be really you know how like when you buy a house the loaning organization sells your loan immediately to another loaning organization yeah what if they just ex- what if they just sold it to Australia? Like I bet you I wonder if that's a thing. Like if you had a US loan and it got sold to Australia and then you just so happen to be like, "Wait, how did I just get affected by this?" That would I would be outraged. I don't know if that's a thing, but it would be outrageous. That would be. Oh yeah, I'd be super mad. Fuming. Next Fuming. up. Next up, Oklahoma kerfuffle. On March 20th, 2023, Oklahoma City University filed a notice for a data breach with the Attorney General of Montana after learning that a cyber attack compromised the security of current and former students and employees. The incident resulted in an unauthorized party gaining access to customers' names, addresses, social security numbers, driver's licenses, and state ID numbers and passport numbers. After confirming that the consumer data was leaked, OCU began sending out breach notification letters to all individuals who were impacted by the recent data security incident university man anything that anything that has any sensitive data whatsoever has a price on it and they'll do whatever they can to to attack it doesn't matter if you're helping teach the future of the world you're probably going to get you know targeted for an attack at some point unfortunately that's just the nature of the beast great Social security numbers, never good. Driver's never license, good. Mm-hmm. Nope, nope, nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nope, nope, nope. Okay, last up, we have gastro catastrophe. Illinois Gastroenterology Group agreed to a class action settlement to resolve claims that it failed to protect patient information from an October 2021 data breach. In April of 2022, IgG 
revealed a data breach from the previous October that compromised the information of 228,000 patients. A subsequent class action lawsuit against the company claimed that they failed to protect patient data through reasonable cybersecurity measures. Illinois Gastroenterology hasn't admitted any wrongdoing, but agreed to pay an undisclosed sum to resolve the data breach class action lawsuit. Under the terms of the settlement, class members can receive various forms of compensation based on which of their information was compromised and any damages that they sustained due to the data breach. Oh, gastro emergency of For real. The cyber type kind. Not great, not great. <clears throat> That'll give you a stomach ache. <laughs> My tummy hurts after reading this one. Oh. Right. What is it again? It's a class action settlement. Albert, yep. we've taught we've had these time and time all, again. All the time. I feel like we the first I feel like we covered the first one and now Ever. it's just and as it happens, every lawyer is like, wait, I can make money off of this. I'm gonna start trying to poke holes in other things and make Absolutely. more Absolutely. More because why not? That's how they make money, right? So yes. what's it gonna show you? You gotta this is just even worse. Even yep. worse is something you need to do, right? Aside from the embarrassment of like having your system breached, you also then might have to actually pay money to people and maybe a yes. considerable sum. So it's not great. Your reputation takes a hit and your finances take a hit. Not worth it. And that's it for this week's wrap up of your weekly healthcare news. I'm at Money Penny. And I'm Albert Battistelli. Hey, bye. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Bandage Podcast produced by eTactics.